Have you ever found yourself questioning whether the Jedi Order really represented the noble guardians of peace and justice in the Star Wars galaxy? What if I told you that the latest episode of The Acolyte will make you rethink everything you thought you knew about the Jedi and the very nature of the Force itself, and reworks the lore in ways that will make many fans uncomfortable, unhappy? We already know that this show captures the start of the corruption of Jedi Order. The first two episodes gave us hints that all was not as it seemed with the seemingly benevolent Jedi. We saw that they had already started altering history and were willing to use questionable means to reach their preferred end. There were shades of the Order's eventual corruption and downfall seeping through the cracks. But Episode 3 absolutely blows the doors open on exposing the Jedi's flaws and moral inconsistencies through a compelling flashback to the childhood of former Jedi Osha and her twin sister Mi, we finally get to see one version of their traumatic past from Osha's point of view. However, it is obvious that there is a lot that Osha did not see. This origin story raises even more questions than it answers. The Acolyte Episode 3 plants the seeds for the Jedi's fall from grace and forces us to see the Order's corruption through a new critical lens. Let's explore how the Acolyte is setting the stage for an unflinching look at the Jedi's inevitable downfall. Also, side note, I strongly recommend Cameron Hurley to all who enjoy ST Prize about lesbians in space, and William Burroughs to those who want only men in their stories. Episode Summary The Acolyte Episode 3 takes us back 16 years before the main storyline to the remote planet of Brandok. This is where we finally learn the origins of the mysterious twins Mi and Osha. As young children, they were raised in a secretive coven of force, wielding witches led by their mothers Anasaya and Coral. Right away, we see this coven represents a radically different interpretation and utilization of the force compared to the increasingly dogmatic and maybe corrupted teachings of the Jedi Order. Anasaya speaks of the force belonging to everyone, not just an elite few who dictate how it should be used. There's an intriguing philosophical divide between the two mother figures. The reserved but caring Coral wants to uphold the coven's ancient traditions passed down over generations. But Anasaya, who we learn created the twins through some Jedi forbidden means, pushes for more freedom for all even if they disagree with her. This conflicting nurturing foreshadows the diverging paths of Mi and Osha themselves. The impressionable me fully embraces the coven's dogma and her predetermined role as its future leader. In contrast, the inquisitive Osha questions these restrictive teachings from a young age without understanding the alternatives showing an independence of spirit. From their very upbringing, we can see the seeds planted for why one twin will eventually turn so vehemently against the Jedi way of life, while the other finds herself drawn to their philosophy of individual growth. This schism between me and Osha sets the stage for the episode's enthralling climax that will have lasting repercussions. The Arrival of the Jedi Just when we're getting a handle on the internal family dynamics within the coven, the episode takes an ominous turn with the arrival of four Jedi Knights Saul, Indara, Kelnaka, and Torbin. These are the same Jedi we know me will eventually hunt down and kill, so their appearance carries weighty tension. From the Coven's perspective, these Jedi represent the encroaching corruption and authoritarianism of their dogmatic order. The way the witches eye the Jedi with suspicion and disdain highlights the fundamental philosophical divide between their two interpretations of the Force. While the Jedi cling to their role as arrogant keepers of arcane knowledge, the witches take a more spiritual, naturalistic view. As Anasaya explains, they see the Force, the thread, as something that flows through and binds all living things, not just a select few warriors and mystics. This sets up a fascinating moral ambiguity from the Jedi's perspective. Are they saviors rescuing Force-sensitive children from fringe cultists? Or are they indoctrinating colonizers, stealing younglings away from their family traditions? Conversely, do the witches' alternative Force teachings represent a harmonious ecological path? Or are they simply a new brand of dark side power? Neither side is purely right or wrong. The Jedi's flaws of hubris and elitism are starkly contrasted with the witch's more balanced spirituality, yet tinged with hints of potential cult-like darkness. It's this potent ambiguity that makes Episode 3 such a powerful and thought-provoking exploration of the Star Wars mythos. 
By sowing doubt in the Jedi's moral superiority, it plants the seeds for their inevitable downfall as a new era of Force teachings rises from the ashes of their corruption. The Climactic Tragedy The philosophical debate between the Jedi and witches comes to a head in a CL Max that, for now, takes place entirely off-screen. When the inquisitive Osha expresses a desire to leave with the Jedi and explore her Force abilities freely, the Coven reacts with horror. Their vehement opposition to Osha's choice highlights the indoctrinating, controlling nature of their beliefs, the very thing the accused Jedi of. Coral treats Osha like a petulant child, incapable of knowing her own heart and mind. The idea of independent thought outside their dogma is unacceptable. In a heartbreaking moment, it's Anasaya who ultimately gives Osha her blessing to follow her own path. Putting her daughter's autonomy first, the swiftness with which she wipes of her tear is beautiful. This generous act of love stands in stark contrast to the Jedi's history of taking younglings from their families with no choice. However, it's the explosive reaction of me that triggers true tragedy. She is so fanatically devoted to the Coven's teachings that she tries to burn her twin sister alive for rejecting their indoctrination. Her screams of, what's wrong with you, at Osha send chills down the spine. In the chaos, we see the witch's bodies strewn about, apparently dead though with no obvious signs of burns or marks. This suggests the Jedi's possible involvement in taking them out to rescue Osha. Me herself falls into a chasm, leaving her fate ambiguous. Later in the spaceship, Osha assumes what happened even before Saul could tell it to her. Obviously, she has misunderstood things. Rashomon effect is in force now. While the episode doesn't tell us much about what happened, it does remind us that there are always many sides to a story. History is not something written in stone, it is as subjective as news. The complete picture can only be seen by putting together all the conflicting perspectives. It does not do it as beautifully as, say, the House of Dragon, but it does showcase how the once noble Jedi Order became corrupted by their own dogma and hunger for control over the Force. The seeds of their downfall, paved with moral compromises, have been sown here. Performances and Production While the Acolyte Episode 3 grappled with deep philosophical questions, it never lost sight of telling a gripping, character-driven story. This is largely thanks to the stellar ensemble cast delivering powerful, nuanced performances. As the kind-hearted but questioning Osha, young actress Lauren Brady imbued the character with an inquisitive spirit and quiet strength. Her twin sister Lee Brady perfectly countered as the increasingly fanatical me, conveying an unsettling intensity behind her wide eyes. But it was Jodie Turner-Smith who stole the show as Mother Anasaya. Turner Smith's multi-layered performance captured Anasaya's inner conflict wanting to uphold her coven's ancient traditions, while also allowing her daughter the autonomy to choose her own path. Her goodbye to Osha was an absolute gut punch. The production design created an immersive, lived-in world for these fraught family dynamics to play out, from the medieval-inspired Coven Fortress to the vividly realized dual moon setting of Brendock. The visuals grounded the high-concept force mythology in something tangible. The intricate costumes and makeup aided in making this isolated culture feel authentic. Notably, there was little reliance on distracting CGI spectacle. Instead, writer-director Leslie Headland kept the focus squarely on her characters and their powerful emotional arcs. This allowed the moral ambiguities and philosophical clashes between the Jedi and witches to resonate more impactfully. Rather than getting bogged down in hollow action sequences, Episode 3 demonstrated the dramatic heft Star Wars can attain when it engages with substantive, metaphysical ideas. The layered storytelling and phenomenal performances transformed a decades-old sci-fi property into a poignant family drama. Conclusion the Acolyte Episode 3 was a tour de force that raised the bar for what a Star Wars story can achieve. By peeling back layers on the Jedi Order's flaws and dogma, it recalibrated everything we thought we knew about the Force and its teachings. Through compelling flashbacks, we witnessed the tragic origin story of Osha and me that set them on their divergent paths. Osha's rebellion against the oppressive indoctrination of her coven mirrors the inevitable downfall of the equally dogmatic Jedi philosophy. Meanwhile, Mi's violent rejection of her sister for leaving foreshadows her transformation into a Jedi hunter. 
The morally ambiguous storytelling presented no easy answers were the Jedi heroic or indoctrinating colonizers. Was the coven preserving ancient traditions or practicing new dark side extremism? These very debates likely led to the order's slide into corruption that we've glimpsed. Beyond just deepening the show's central mystery, Episode 3 achieved a remarkable philosophical depth rarely seen in the Star Wars universe. The tensions between individual growth and institutional dogma, spirituality and religion, echo many real-world ideological struggles. Of course, the episode wouldn't work nearly as well without the grounded, emotional performances from the ensemble cast, especially young talents like the Brady Twins and veteran Jodie Turner-Smith. Their committed work transcended the sci-fi trappings into a poignant family drama. The Acolyte has firmly established itself as one of the most thematically rich and philosophically fascinating Star Wars stories ever told. Episode 3 laid the groundwork for an unflinching exploration of how the Jedi's noble intentions became their fatal flaw, leading to their downfall. Where this former beacon of peace and knowledge lost its way is sure to have even more shocking revelations. So what did you think of this game-changing chapter? What are your theories on how the Jedi's path to the dark side will continue to unfurl? Let me know in the comments below. May the Force be with you.